Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about pacemakers, but not just any pacemaker, a gastric pacemaker. Most people are familiar with pacemakers, at least when it comes to the heart. It's a small device that is used in people who have abnormal heart rhythms to regulate their rhythm. It's usually under the skin, it has wires going from the device to the heart, and it will occasionally deliver electrical impulses to stimulate the heart to contract. But did you know that you can have a pacemaker for your stomach. A gastric pacemaker, similar to a heart pacemaker, is also a device that is implanted underneath the skin with wires going from the device to the stomach. It's also there to deliver electrical impulses to the stomach and is used in people who've got a disorder called gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is a disorder where there is slow transit of food from the stomach, usually because the nerves of the stomach are affected or have been damaged and the stomach is unable to contract to propel food through. What ends up is, is a lot of stasis. People end up with symptoms such as feeling bloated, feeling full quickly after eating, nausea and vomiting, and can end up with a lot of health problems as a result. This is sometimes treated with a combination of diet, eating less frequent meals and medical therapy. When all this fails and people are still having really bad symptoms, enter the gastric pacemaker. In some ways, it acts like a cardiac pacemaker by delivering electrical signals to stimulate the stomach to contract. It also emits a high frequency stimulus, which interferes with the transmission of signal from the stomach to the brain. This helps to relieve the symptoms of nausea and vomiting. There are a few reports out there about the benefits of a gastric pacemaker and people have reported that it can really help reduce their symptoms of nausea and vomiting. However, it's still quite a novel product. It's not mainstream. There's still a lot of research going on into how exactly it works and the best way to utilise it. One thing to note is that if you have got one of these, you may not be able to have an MRI scan. For starters, it will mess with the calibration and can lead to a device malfunction. Secondly, because it's metallic, the MRI can heat it up significantly, causing skin burns. There are newer devices that are made of MRI safe metal these days, so that risk is quite low. Okay guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave me a like below. Also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Bye! Thank you.